difficult to hear about uh, potential over a million dollars of a system's upgrade when uh, we think about Metro Detention Center being the most, the newest jail that uh, uh, LAPD, the department has. And just as we have the mother of the deceased, Waukesha Wilson, um, you know, it's troubling to know that whatever system in place failed her family. Um, the department is, is, is in an awkward position because it's, it's got to be held accountable uh, uh, for the death because it happened within the department's facilities and therefore we the people, we the taxpayers in the city of Los Angeles are going to wind up paying a multi-million dollar lawsuit because when LAPD comes out with a statement that says she died by suicide, which is not possible based on the telephone unit that is in the jail system that if this is the most recent uh, facility that, um, you know, the prisons have, have modified those, those, those telephone units decades ago. And so whoever signed off on that portion of the, the uh, modifications of the implementation of this new jail facility is going to be held culpable for this debt, which therefore means, you know, there's nothing that the department can do to, to, to defuse this. And so we, the people, are going to be fighting this the entire step of the way in terms of what needs to be done to improve this. But the problem is we've got Ms. Hines here who lost her daughter. Um, there's nothing that the department can say it can fix this. And so the problem is wherever these new camera systems are going to be put in place, there needs to be for better protection of not only the department, but the department will be losing uh, taxpayers' money going out to victims, millions and millions of dollars that could be going towards positive programming and then healing our community. So there's a lot more that needs to be done. Yes. Michael Williams, followed by Melina Abdullah. We'll do something dirty later. Like You're great. George Bussetti. <laughs> so, upgrading the system means nothing. Right? This is just like body cameras, everything else. When you can't see the video, and only your officers can see the video, and they can say whatever story they want to make up. As we see with, with constantly, we see with police video, right? When we look at McCall McDonald, when we look at Walter Scott, when we look at um, uh, 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 um, uh, Tamir, Rice. Tamir Rice, all these other, we can go on, right? We can go on. Time after time. We see the video, we see the release of the video, and it goes completely against the police's account of, of what happened. So, if this, I don't give a damn about these, uh, these cameras, because if you guys are the people going to see it, why should you waste a million dollars on it? It's not the video <laughs> camera system that failed Waukesha Wilson. It's the system itself that failed Waukesha Wilson. <laughs> So we, it, there's no point of upgrading these, these jail cameras when we have the same cops, the same policies, the same in, institutions that killed her. Right. Bustamante mm. already said that, that there was an officer involved uh, involved with his, in his death. He already had made that claim. So we know that something happened. We know one of your officers did something to Waukesha Wilson or was involved with Waukesha Wilson's death, but she won't release the video. Why? But you can release a two little clip of, of Carnell Snell holding what y'all say is a gun. Uh, you can release that. That's okay. But Waukesha Wilson can't get her video put out. Jesse Morrell can't get his video put out. So again, you guys, this video camera stuff can go away. The body cams, this thing can go away until you fix the root issue, which is the LAPD uh, itself. Until that's fixed, ain't none of this is bad. Release Waukesha Wilson's video. Yeah. You're great. So I'm speaking to you all because they're not listening. <laughs> they're not listening. I want us to remind ourselves of what happened after Waukesha Wilson's body was stolen from us. Her mother and her aunt and her family immediately came and asked for the help of the community, 
And we all engaged in trying to get justice for Waukesha Wilson. And immediately, we requested that video. Right now, they're trotting out some lie about how the video may be gone because it automatically deletes in 30 days. We've been requesting that video in voice, in letter, through action, from the moment that Waukesha Wilson's body was stolen. So we don't need to believe their lies. Their whole manipulation trying to get more taxpayer dollars to fund their system is a lie. And we need to think about what it is we're trying to do. We need to think about, I was trying to think about the data and how we can convince them, but it is no convincing them. And I'm sitting here behind Sister Lisa, who is experiencing something that we're not experiencing, right? This is not a question of policy. This is also a question of life, of her daughter's life. Right. So what are we going to do? How are we going to demand something better? Shane Goldsmith has been, I heard people mumbling it here, has been a tremendous disappointment, and I hope that you shift your position. You walked past us last week in your suit and waved at us like you were Miss America. You're not Miss America. We know you have a brother who's incarcerated. Do something for the people. Stand up. Do something for the people. How dare you be a part of their forum? How dare you be a part of their forum? Whose side are you on? It's time for you to ask yourself that. Are you down with Steve Sokol? Or are you down well, stand with Stand up and stand apart. George Bozzetti, former director of policy for Clark, California. I was just down in Anaheim to a police protest down there. I've been watching these police commissions and he's cut. I see these people coming in here in good faith trying to talk to you to stop the killing nationally! Sir, uh, I'm going to ask you to stay on topic, but you can... I am on topic! No, you're not. So the, you you can... We'll stop the clock, okay? Just in case you want to get on topic, we'll give you the time. Um, you can come into public comment and talk about it. Okay, I'll do that right now. You ask for a bug, you're going to get it. You arrested me, he brought me here, okay? You refused my phone call, given to me federally and nationally, Supreme Court decision, for, it was in three hours. A day here is nothing. Three days in the Twin Towers is nothing. This is your last warning, sir. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna let you be fools again. Here we go. It's all on tape, and it's going up today. Bye. Okay, see you. I'll, I'll talk the next time. No, I'm not leaving. I walked away, didn't I? Oh, yeah, no, You're the fool. Okay, do we have a motion for approval and item uh, E to Second. All in favor? Nazi fascist America, people. Next. We have one comment card. We have General Jeff. Do your job, General. <laughs> you deserve the name, dude. Uh, Commissioner, we're Sergeant Brian Heaney. I'm one of the squad supervisors of Metro Mountain. Uh, we've used the same carrier for a number of years. It's been a uh, reoccurring issues where he's done good work and we haven't had any issue with the horse shoes or things that have happened and we're just asking for a new contract. Nancy Camarada, contract section of LAPD. Um, we actually advertise this RFP online for the number of days and we can't force people to respond and they just, you know, they didn't show up. Uh, about 45. 
Speaking specifically to the, uh, the Mountain Police Metro Division, as the uh, Division is in Central Division, which is in Skid Row. Now, in regards to the uh, Mountain Police, the horses in Skid Row. Years ago, there was an issue with the horses patrolling on the sidewalks in Skid Row, while the horses are defecating on the sidewalks, and the officers are not cleaning them up. And so, in essence, the officers were shitting on people's homes where people sleep homeless people specifically and so I brought that before this commission years ago and the officers were uh, 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 delegated to and regulated to uh, then patrol in the uh, streets and only go onto the sidewalks when they were um, engaged in some type of uh, contact with a potential suspect. Um, years ago um, since the Mountain Division went away from this policy and they're back to shooting in the streets and shitting in Skid Row on the sidewalks, just leaving, um, leaving the decrement in the streets. And so it, it's not, that's not an asset to our community. Well, when I confronted Central Division, um, they basically say, oh, it's only hay and water. And basically saying that because it's the sun, the sun will, you know, uh, make it evaporate into the environment. That is not humane, especially in our community, we have Skid Row, and, and if the, the, the department isn't going to address that issue in regards to anything concerning with the mounted pl pl platoon, um, you know, we've asked that, you know, we the people ask that you take that into consideration and make the uh, unnecessary adjustments accordingly, effectively. Thank you. I want to make sure the public has the most accurate information Sergeant Sanders, you address the issue of, of when horses, uh, as part of their patrol duties, uh, defecate, what are the actions of the mountain unit? Uh, it's an action of every officer that's responsible for the horse, and uh, if the horse does defecate, either on a street or in a sidewalk or any position on a lawn and so forth, the officer makes every effort um, available to clean up that mess and then put it into a trash bag. Are you carrying a shovel? Okay. Bags. <laughs> oh man. If this was a real, it'd be funny. Saturday night. Next, or item number three, report of the chief of police, Chief Warren. Yeah. Commissioner, good morning, and I'm asking you, Charlie, back to, as Commissioner uh, President Johnson indicated earlier, it's the way today, uh, uh, Attorney General uh, Officer of Detective Nadine Hernandez, I'm, uh, I'm here to provide the uh, chief report. As to significant instances and activities uh, this, since this mission last met, I'd like to cover a couple uh, issues, some of which, again, were covered by Commissioner Johnson's opening remarks, so I'll be brief. Uh, first was the uh, the tragic uh, tragedy of the funeral of three fallen officers here in the Southern California area. Uh, the attendance by uh, Chief Beck as well as some of the command staff and, and officers from the department, or Sergeant Steve Owens from the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, as well as officers, officers Leslie Ravini and Jose Gilbert Vega from Palm Springs. <coughs> Those officers represent the total 46 officers who have fallen by gunfire uh, this year in the, in the, uh, in the nation. The officers, uh, the command, uh, including Chief Beck, as was indicated, the earlier travel authority also attended the uh, ICP, the International Association of Chiefs of Police, and major city chiefs uh, conference in San Diego uh, approximately a week and a half ago. The, our attendance there was to familiarize ourselves with the new and emerging strategies in policing. Uh, public safety uh, strategies are being engaged by our peers across uh, this country as well as uh, across the world, as well as here from our law enforcement leaders on the uh, on the federal and state levels as to uh, how efforts to, by their uh, entities, by their uh, span of control, can help improve public safety here in Los Angeles. I also want to report <coughs> on an officer involved shooting that occurred uh, this past uh, Sunday morning, and I'll read really a prepared statement for that. The following information is very preliminary and subject to change as the investigation continues. On Sunday morning, October 23rd, at approximately 12.55 a.m., two uniformed police officers assigned to Northeast Area Gang Enforcement Detail were driving west on Sunset Boulevard, approaching Sutherland Street. The officers reported that they saw a large group of males involved in an altercation 
on the west sidewalk of Sutherland Street, just north of Sunset Boulevard. The officers start their, stopped their marked police vehicle to investigate when they saw a male Hispanic armed, later identified as Andre Ramirez, a male Hispanic, 25 years of age, armed with a blue steel revolver. Mr. Ramirez pointed the gun at the group and then towards the officer, which resulted in an officer's off shooting. Mr. Ramirez fled west on Sunset Boulevard, followed by the officer who chased him on foot. Mr. Ramirez ran through a gas station located on the northeast corner of Sunset and Portilla Street, where a second officer involved shooting occurred. Mr. Ramirez was struck by gunfire and fell to the ground, where he was taken into custody without a further incident. He was later transported by ambulance to the University of Southern California, Los Angeles County Medical Center, where he underwent surgery and was later transferred to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, Twin Towers, in stable condition. A revolver was recovered at the gas station near where Mr. Ramirez was taken into custody. Preliminary investigation of the officer involved shooting located at least two security videos that have captured at least portions of both officers involved shooting. The investigation also determined that one of the males involved in the physical altercation was an off-duty LAPD officer who was not armed and did not identify himself as a police officer prior to or during the altercation. The suspect, Mr. Andre Ramirez, was booked for assault with a deadly weapon on a police officer and is currently in the custody of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. Again, as I stated, this investigation is very early on. There is much more work to be done in collecting the facts of this. And, of course, the Inspector General, as well as the office, the District Attorney's Office, responded that night as per their protocols and will conduct their oversight and separate investigation. And all this matter will be brought before the board as is our officer involved shooting protocols. The officer that was involved in the altercation, the off-duty police officer. What happened to him? That's not the Chief Finish's report, sir. What happened to him? That's not the Chief Finish's report. I have no statement regarding the officer, the other officer that was, the off-duty officer that was there beyond what I've stated. Let me, at this point, talk about our crime statistics. Since we last met here, we've had a difficult couple weeks in regards to violent crime. Specifically, we've lost ground on our homicides and shooting victims. The Commission will remember that on the 15th of October, in the early morning hours in West Adams District, in a front neighborhood yard that was an underground, if you will, Jamaican restaurant of sorts, a shooting occurred in which 15 people were shot. Four of those individuals were killed. The officers responded, attempted to render aid, as well as to attempt to identify those responsible. And while the organization, the department, has made two initial arrests, much more additional work is needed in determining who is responsible for this and also mounting successful prosecution of those who bring those to justice for this loss of life. In addition to those homicides this past week, we had a total of 11 homicides. And in those homicides, they're spread across various portions of the city and involve both family violence, a tragedy involving a two-year-old child, for instance, that was stabbed by a male during a dispute, as well as a murder-suicide, and as well as gang violence and other matters, matters that we're still investigating to determine the underlying cause of the shooting. However, the department, as we've looked at these from an operations standpoint, as well as across the organization, we believe our strategies that we have currently employed are still appropriate, are still relevant to impact the shooting violence and the loss of life. Year-to-date, where that leaves us is, as of this past Saturday, a 1.3% increase today in homicides with 241 lost lives versus 238 the same period last year. Overall, our violent crime in the city remains at 10.6%, which is the 15th week of a reduction, if you will, from where our high was mid-summer. However, still too much violence here in Los Angeles. Overall, we have a 5.6% increase in violent crime. I'm sorry, a 5.6% increase in total Part 1 crime. Our victims shot, again, last time we were here, we had substantially fewer, I believe, in excess of 30 fewer shooting victims. Today, we're effectively 948 people have been shot in the city of Los Angeles versus last year, 949. So we are troubled by this these last two weeks, and we are, however, believing that our strategies of 
are added uniform uh, crime suppression, are added investigative efforts that uh, will, uh, in working in partnership with gang reduction youth development, the grid program, and our community stakeholders, uh, oh. will be able to impact this. A couple other areas I want to report on, and that is an officer involved shootings. Uh, as is customary of us to report, we've had a total of 23 officer involved shootings here to date. Our four year average is just over 25. Uh, and last year, there were 33 officer involved shootings with hits. Uh, at this, this time, which is a 30% reduction. Does that trouble you too? I'm moving toward the uh, traffic collision. Does the chief finish his speech, please? Does any story? You can fill out a card. Thanks. Moving ahead. towards our traffic collisions, our hit and runs. Last one. We have a 16% increase in uh, hit and runs involving serious injury or death. We have a 15% increase in serious injury or death in the case of pedestrians. Okay. And the <laughs> that we have a 15% reduction in bicyclists and collisions that involve death. Moving over to our personnel statistics, we have 9,853 personnel on payroll. That's sworn personnel, and 158 of those are in the academy. We're approximately 147 people short of our 10,000 uh, sworn person goal for the department staff. So, for civilian staffing, we have 2,741 civilians. We're still leaving with more than 500 civilian vacancies. As for our reserves, special, specialist reserves, we have a total of 422 uh, police special res police reserves. We have 284 specialist reserves. We have 58 chaplains. And finally, we have uh, 7,861 cadets. And I'm pretty sure that concludes my remarks. Any questions, Chief? Commissioners? Any public comments? We have 11 from the comments. Okay. Okay, we'll start with the first four. We have Kentish Jenkins, Beth Kemp, Akili, and Paula Miner. Mr. Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's our board. Glad to be here. Glad to see you. Uh, we're talking about uh, kind of pretty rough week last week. Uh, pretty rough, rough week for residents, too. I'm, I was troubled by what I heard today. You know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the bridge. I'm, I like to say I'm the Martin Luther King who was actually called a sellout. Yeah, he's called a sellout. Right? You're right. I'm no, I, he's right. I'm no Martin Luther King. But I like to say that uh, I, I'd like to try and do what he did, which, which is become a bridge. And in order to become a bridge, we have to be honest. And I'm, I'm shocked at what... Uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Abdullah said the, the, the video has, has, has gone missing of Rakesha Wilson. Is, is, is that true? If that's true, then, then um, it, it's important. It's, 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 it's virtually almost impossible for us to actually create a bridge because we have video and there's no video anymore. What does that mean? So it's important that we find the video of what happened to Waukesha Wilson. Shut the fuck up! If we don't find the video of what happened to Waukesha Wilson, then uh, there could be no honest dialogue in this, uh, you know, in, in, in this uh, situation. This, this city is, is ready to ignite. If we don't do something about it, I'm one of the people that say, I want to do something about it. I don't want to yell at you. I don't want people yelling at me. I, I'm sorry, I keep going to be all at one. Right? But I actually wanted, I, I'm one of the people that actually want to do something about it, build a bridge. Right? Build a bridge between the police and, and the community. Because I like cops. And I like the community. I don't like bad cops. And it's important that we, we support the police. Thank you, sir. Well, I don't like cops and I don't want to build any bridges. I want to burn them down because honestly we need to put you all on an island somewhere to fight amongst yourselves because that seems what, what should be done. You talk about this, um, this co cop who's off duty who was in this group of people. Was maybe he the one who started the problem to begin with? Was he spying on them? Was he not off duty? Was he actually undercover maybe? Hmm. Oh no, wait, we don't have the right to that information, so we shall never know. You know, I have a serious problem with week after week you talk about crime statistics, but you don't talk about real solutions to preventing crime, like building community programs for the youth, like helping get unhoused people off the streets into real homes, 
like, you know, real things that could benefit the community versus criminalizing the community. And that's what seems the city of Los Angeles and the Los Angeles Police Department is about. When you ask an officer on the street who you guys have trained, who's underneath you and Chief Beck and everybody else, you know, they don't know the laws. They, they claim it's our job to know the laws. Then what the fuck are they enforcing? Honestly, if they don't know the laws and they're not familiar with it after their whole eight weeks of training, well, guess what? A lot of us, we spent way more than eight weeks in this room than they have in training. And that should be scary to you. You know, they're taught that we are the enemy. They're taught to be scared of us. They come out in the streets and they draw their guns and they put their hands on their pistols. And you say, oh, well, you know, if they fear for their lives, Jackie Lacey says, if they fear for their lives, they have the right to shoot somebody. I'm five foot two and I'm not afraid of somebody with a knife. I'm five foot two and I'm not afraid of someone who's running away with me. And you know what? I'm not even afraid of someone with a gun. Because I grew up in a place where people were trained to use guns. I've held a gun in my hand since I was old enough to stand, starting with BB guns, going hunting with my friends. You know, if the cops can't handle uh, to de-escalate someone with a gun, they should look into a different position, like grocery bagging. Keely, followed by Paula Miner. I yield my time, but I do want to thank Melina and others for the, making the statements. I'm disappointed that the statements don't do anything or go anywhere. It's almost like we get here every Tuesday, we make points, and it doesn't matter. They just move right on. So I'm yielding my time. Thank you. Next speaker. Paula Miner. Followed by George Bazzetti and Trevor Gerard. You know, my comments were really for Chief Beck, so I'm going to hold some of them till the next time he shows up. Because I wanted to respond to some of the things that he said in the last couple of weeks, especially at UC Irvine and at KPCC, about those of us who attend these meetings. He attempted to tell the public that this group is not important. This group has no impact. This group only wants theater. This group is upset with every shooting. This group should not be believed. And so I think it's important for me to tell you that because I don't think Chief Moore can respond for him. Um, the other thing I would like to say is that we do come here over and over again. And uh, we're, we're trying to understand why no comments, why no questions, why no issues are responded to. Um, you know, I want to just let this you know and get on record. I'll talk with Chief Beck further about it. An open letter was sent to the mayor and um, to the head of the Los Angeles City Council. And that open letter, I'll just read the first paragraph, said, Prominent South Los Angeles community and labor leaders are calling for a state of emergency in Los Angeles and are urging Mayor Garcetti and the Council to act with urgency to hold LAPD accountable and address the disproportionate use of legal force on black and Latino residents. And I'll talk about this further with Beck, but this particular document has been released and has been delivered to the Mayor and to the Council, and it has been covered by the community newspapers, including the LA Sentinel and the LA Wave. So while we sit in here and get disregarded by the commission, the people's representatives, all across the city, not just this small group. This small group probably are the ones who can get here at 9.30 in the morning to police headquarters. But this is a citywide issue and you guys minimize it and try to uh, make us seem insignificant and it's wrong. And I also speaker, want to please. say, Next speaker. say your name. Well, 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 George Pazzetti, followed by Trevor Gerard and Michael Novick. I know you all hate me. And you, sir, I got jail for you. Listen close, everybody. Go on your cell phones on your computer. LA George Bazzetti hyphen YouTube B U Z Z E G T I. Go to video police video L A F A seven C seven uh, C. 
That's the 5515 Police Commission meeting, Dudios. Okay, you will rake it off your videos. Only you forgot I'm good. I pulled it down. You erased the audio. Dudes, prison, PC132. A way to change a government document. Felony with those statute of limitations, I see it too, you're missing here. You obviously got the message from last night. Or did you? Did Mr. Booster Money give it to you? Hey George, do you have any comments on the report? Yeah, I do, dude. You're going to jail. <laughs> and you are not obeying the 2003 DOJ agreement with the help of the DOJ. I have the proof. 2001. You messed with the wrong person when you tried to kill me, suckers. Can I your eye? Eat that one. Go on your cell phones. Uh, so, <clears throat> the free man does not ask for justice, he takes it. A free woman or trans person or non gender conforming person does not bargain for their life. They assert the right not only to exist, but to resist. And that's what we're doing here. We are resisting. We are resisting the bullshit narrative that uh, you can reform the system, which is fundamentally broken in the first place. We're resisting the narrative that uh, is also highly racialized and is a dog whistle that we perform theater, or that we're more interested in uh, making provocative statements than actually engaging in real uh, dialogue. So, um, I was, before I was thrown out, uh, the last time, I was talking about the fact that Matt Johnson, in the little PR campaign that you all have been doing, let go in a, in a meeting at NAN that uh, the mayor has no disciplinary power over the police, the commission has no disciplinary power over the police, and Charlie Beck himself is light on discipline, but also he cannot actually fire anybody other than what goes to the league, and they're the ones who can actually um, administer any sort of actual discipline. So it's a zero accountability culture. And, and, and this whole thing, you've been put here, right, to contain us so that we're not actually out in the streets starting the fire. Yeah. So, so, so. Right, well, I'm getting them. Right, well, I'm getting them. I'm getting them. Um, so, so, um, so Charlie Beck, in his, in his talk at UC Irvine, um, uh, said that it was unreasonable to police a violent city uh, without the use of weapons. Something, something like this. Um, this place is the violence. Yes, the LAPD Thank is you. the violence. in tanks, assassinating people, engaging in witness intimidation. Come back for public comment. Seriously. Yeah, right. The next speaker, Michael Novick, Billy Davenport, and General Jeff. I'm with uh, white people for black lives. We're here in Southland with Black Lives Matter. Earlier, I think you said that uh, it seems like nothing you do here matters, but I think it does. And I think that uh, uh, it's our job to get up and keep your head and under your skin. I heard the chief, uh, chief of police here basically say that the uh, LAPD is uh, a compu a completely a useless and futile in, in stopping crime and reducing violence in the city. Uh, that uh, uh, you know the, the best they can they can brag about is that they reduce the, the rate of increase uh, in, 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 in uh, 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 violence and, and uh, other types of crimes uh, that uh, you know people are being killed uh, and they can mm -hmm. stop it. So We're I think that uh, uh, it's your job as a You're the right guy. to deal with that, to question that, to to question the whole nature of policing that goes on in the city. Uh, when all the police can do is contribute to the violence and the killings and the shootings that take place. And apparently there was an incident in which another uh, uh, off-duty officer was involved in an altercation that resulted in two uh, officers of shootings. Uh, the, the person uh, probably is alive only by the grace of God. 
I, I, I know that this report was a, a two-week report because you didn't meet last week and two weeks ago I couldn't come because it was a, a Jewish Day of Atonement. And, uh, you know, the, the, what, when you uh, uh, try to uh, do atonement for things that you did wrong, uh, you have to start by first acknowledging uh, that you've done wrong. You name the crimes and, and, and the sins that you've committed and then you, you uh, make a commitment to stop uh, committing them. Uh, Malcolm X said that you don't thank a person for pulling a knife halfway out of your back. Uh, so I think that this police commission needs to start by directing the LAPD to acknowledge its crimes and acknowledge what it's doing wrong and then figure out a strategy for having different kind of policing in the city. And you need to start with yourselves and having a different kind of police commission in the city because you're not doing your job. You're not holding these people to account. You're not responding to the community. You're not acting as if we matter or the lives of the people that have been taken matter. And that's on you. Michael Williams. Fantastic. A lot of us come here every week because we, we care about our communities and it's a shame to see how much the commission doesn't care about us and that we have to hear the statistics, the statistics that we have to hear coming from the chief. And every sign up here says something about the people, something about the community, but it doesn't seem like the people or the community matter. Um, and it's not only relevant in, in this meeting, it's irrelevant. I mean, you can see it in the police that are outside patrolling, like they don't care about the people or the community. They haven't been taught to be people persons. Uh, of course, they're, they're, they're taught to be tacticians and and uh, how to hold weaponry and all of that. But how many of them are actually trained to deal with the community, people of the community? I've been in this community since 1973, and as a child, nine years old, I was, you know, I was being picked on by the police. I was a little black kid, you know, a little. Police officers would come to the neighborhood and tell me to run around the corner. And if I stopped, they'd take me to jail. You know, these are the kind of police officers. And I'm not talking about just now. These police, this has been happening for, for, for years and hundreds of years. Yeah, that's okay. I, I would like to say. I got the voice. But at some point, I just want to complete. maybe once the police, I cook them. and maybe once this commission starts being you know more about the people in the community and actually listen to some positive people that have some things to say. Then maybe we could change some of these statistics and maybe police wouldn't have to use as much force as they use them. You're a dumb reporter. You got your Michael Williams. I bust you fools all the time. I never did any reporting really unified or not. General That's a Skiro. joke. General Jeffrey Skiro, um, because there's a question in regards to Talk to you about something uh, serious. We Don't be totally criminal. I want you to do your job. Uh, um, the first one in terms of this past week. Uh, what's been ongoing going on in the specifically to uh, Skid Row? Uh, San, San Juan Park and Skid Row, uh, Central Division uh, deployed officers to this park and they were just leaving, like, just sitting in the park or standing in the park all day long. Um, I, I was told by previous captains of Central Division that um, officers could not just stand in place for longer than 30 minutes because it, it, then it could be assumed that it's uh, a, a, a potential waste of total waste of taxpayers and dollars. Um, for the officers just to just sit around the park, that's not. Um, it's not helping the situation when they're not doing anything. They're just standing there. They're not talking to the community. There's no positive programming. They're not contributing to anything going on in the park. They're just wasting, you know, just taxpayer dollars in a free check. Uh, point number two, we talk about crime, crime statistics. Uh, we, the people, are still not uh, comfortable um, and satisfied with uh, the department's uh, presentation on crime stats. Uh, Going back to last year, LA Times had reported that uh, the department was caught wrongfully classifying uh, uh, crime zones, specifically violent crimes. Uh, and so we're still not satisfied that that situation has been rectified. We need to, this police, we, this commission needs to look into that a little bit more to reassure, uh, uh, reassure the public, we the people, that something has been modified and improved. 
Um, in terms of uh, bullet point number three, reassignment of officers in Skid Row, uh, the officer that was involved in killing uh, uh, Brother Africa, Officer Martinez, still patrols in our streets. That's disrespectful. And in terms of personnel strength, there's a whole lot of officers that are out of shape and need to be in better shape if they're going to be out here patrolling our streets. Personnel strength. Uh, so let's talk about that shooting in Palm Springs, right? Um, here you have a guy that has a, a, a modified rifle, body armor, kills two police officers, and somehow makes it to trial and pleads not guilty. Yes. <laughs> well, why Carnell Snell, uh, Kenny Watkins, Richard Richer, um, Keith Bercy, Charlie Africa, Miguel Jones, Michelle Ford. Ford, um, Waikisha Wilson, can't make it to their trial. Can't make it to their trial because they get shot. I had a I had a guy. So, how, how is that possible for Bob Springs to take down an a armed person who had just killed two police officers? But you guys can't take down an 18 year old kid without shooting him. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. So that's the point, right? Is that you keep coming up with this narrative that, okay, because they're violent, right? Because they're resisting, because they have a gun, because they have a knife or some other weapon, they're impossible, it is impossible for you to take them in custody alive. What we see time and time after again, we see it in across seas, in other countries, we see it in other police forces, we see it when the, the suspect is not black or Latino, we see it in a, a, a many cases that you have the capacity and the ability to take people into custody without murdering them. So stop the bullshit, stop the lies about you throwing out violent crime statistics about how many people got killed, because that's your fault. Because you take resources, you drain the resources from the communities mm. that need them. Mm. Mm. So that's on you. And Chief Charlie Beck, which is why he needs to be fired. So let's stop the games. You guys can take people in next year without murdering them. You guys know you can. It's just you don't give a damn about black people and you don't give a damn about black people's lives. Uh, Ruth Sarnoff. Um, I want to uh, speak to the issue of the reinstatement and reassignment of officers. Um, and um, I don't have the uh, exact uh, article that covered it with me today, but I um, know that there uh, have been two shootings by the same officer within a period of about two weeks. And what that comes to my mind is, what is an investigation or what is a review or what do these things mean when an officer who shoots somebody still has his gun, is out on active duty, and shoots and kills another person and it's not on your agenda today. Wow. I mean, come on. Wow. We have a lot of things to deal with here. I have been in Los Angeles since 1945, since the time when there were signs on the lawns, no Mexicans or dogs, and everything was segregated in this town way later than the 40s. It was the 40s, it was the 50s, and it was on into the summer of the 60s when the theaters in downtown Los Angeles, black people, had to sit in the balcony. Come on. There's a long history of racism and there's a long history of racism in the police department. Yeah. Uh, you can go back to the Sleepy Lagoon case. You can go back to the bricks through the windows as people tried to get housing. Um, the discrimination all the way through the period when white people were getting loans federal loans and buying homes and nobody else could buy a home. Is it any, uh, 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 it's no mystery to why uh, the housing crisis is what it is today because you're running more people into homelessness 
that you're taking out of homelessness by the po policies of the city and of the county. Exactly. And so it's, it's, it's very different. Public comment? I got a ticket on that. This is one out of public comment. Yes. Just, uh, uh, yeah, just a logistical question. There was a woman sitting here from the department. Was she using facial recognition technology? No, she backwards? used social media, which okay. technically, yeah. So, because she had all those two cameras pointed backwards in, on this side, so I just want to make sure. And just for All right. Um, for okay, so um, on March 1, Charlie Africa was murdered. Uh, and Shane Goldsmith, I'm going to just look at you and share this story with you. In uh, 2015, on March 1st, Charlie Africa, a unhoused man, uh, was murdered when five officers pulled up and pulled guns, and he was shot six times. Um, this year, on October 14th, an incident happened on Lapis and 6th Street in Skid Row, where there was a disagreement between a resident and someone across the street on where trash should be put, something very basic. It ended up in 12 patrol cars showing up, at least 8 to 12 patrol cars, completely putting the community under siege, each one of them coming out with their shotguns and guns caught, including beanbags and everything else, pointing towards the community, and their revolvers out, and everything, as you can see, like an occupied army showing up. Now remember, this is a man living in a tent who had a disagreement about where trash should be put because the city has failed in, in hauling trash. The point here being that the community intervened yeah. and about 12 community members created a wall of defending this community member and kept the cops away from that. This is happening on the street and this will not stop because the community after what happened with Charlie Africa and continues to happen in Charlie Oconio is now going to defend itself. Can you relate this at all to the I can relate it to the chief because the chief did not share that in his report because we haven't had a meeting since October 11th. The chief failed to say that the community was put under siege. Michael Moore failed to say that 8 to 12 patrol cars were there with guns cocked pointing towards a man who's living in a tent and the only issue was there was a disagreement. Michael Moore failed to say in his report that they were claiming that he had a knife and the community had formed a defensive wall against no him. No knife. No knife at all. Okay, so this song. is where this is going. Next. This is You keep on interfering me, so Rob, I still have time. This is where this is going. The community is going to defend itself. This whole garbage about four public people out there. <coughs> public I'm going to hold you responsible. Okay? Yeah, let's we'll start with this. Public comment, the first five cards are Princess Jenkins. I want to see how many are here, so we can make a determination <laughs> whether there will be one minute or two. I'm going to start with that bullshit, so Rob. So we're off. I got you. People here are documented all the way back. One. <coughs> you really signed up. You put cards in for public comment. No, we're just joking. <laughs> we just like to raise our hands. Your job is to listen to us. You work for us. You can you can act a little bit better. Okay, we can go to um. We'll go to two minutes. Go ahead. Okay. Fine, Petrus Jenkins, Ed Kemp, Akili, Patricia. I'm sorry, Paul Miner, and Joseph Ezreal. Francis Jenkins, public to city life newsletter activist since 1991. You know, uh, in February of, 2000, of February of 1992, we were at the uh, mayor's office, Mayor Bradley's office, telling him that, uh, you know, something's going to happen in the city. But we presented a proposal to the mayor to create jobs for young people. Well, uh, you know, his deputy chief, he was polite. And uh, after the meeting, but we heard nothing from him. That was February of 92. April of 92, the city burned. Guess who called us back after that? The mayor's office. <coughs> See, essentially people want to wait until this, this thing gets out of control. I've been doing this for a long time. And it's my belief that you, you, you cut it off at the, at, at the root, at, at its roots. And when people ask, are they down? Yes. I'm down with the activists. I'm down with Steve Sobor. I'm down with uh, the president, uh, President Johnson. I'm down with the, with the board. I'm down with the police. 
I'm, I'm the breed. Somebody's got to be the breed. I decided I'd be the breed. That's what happened with you. You, I, I, you won't believe how many times Martin Luther King heard that. What? The hell are you talking about? We want to burn this place. But that man was the breed. He tried to stop the burning. You see, the reality is this. That actually, I've become such a, a, a huge, what I call myself a breed. Everybody else can call me something else. But ain't nothing I ain't to call it for. That is, that is my GoFundMe page. I decided somebody's got to do something about it. You want to do something about it? Google Princess Jenkins, P R E N T I S S J E N K I N S. Go to my GoFundMe page. Peace between residents and police. Well, I'm not a bridge. I'm not here to be walked on. But it seems that this board is walking all over us. This board is supposed to be a neutral board, yet every time it sides with the police with no questions asked. Why is that? Are you all intimidated by LAPD like we are? Well, I'm sick of being intimidated. And what Hamed just spoke about with the man on Skid Row, that was what I spoke about earlier. And I was one of those people who stood in front of the guns, who stood in front of the 30 cops, with their hands on their real guns, not just their less lethal. They were ready to hurt him, if not kill him. They were demanding we get out of the way. They shoved a five-foot woman back five feet, screaming, I'm going to arrest you. It was the women standing in front of this man. And no, the man was not a person of color. He was actually white. But the person who called it in was an officer. I don't know if he disclosed that when he called it into 911, but you should look at the phone call saying he had a knife because he was standing in the middle of the street yelling at the officer with an LAPD stuff sign. I was standing in front of him and the other woman was standing behind him making sure he did not get hit by a car. You know, if the community is willing to stand up for one of another, we can take care of one of another. 54 days at City Hall, we didn't need the cops for anything. 60 days at City Hall with Occupy LA, again, we didn't need the cops for anything. So that just proves that the community can handle themselves and we don't need armed thugs coming into our communities and we certainly don't need a board of apologists saying what they do is right. We need someone to hold all of you accountable and if this you know, they say protesting in the streets isn't the way, go to meetings. I've been coming to these meetings now for a couple of months where people here have been coming for years. Why didn't I come? Because I don't think they're effective. I videotape this to prove that they're not effective. What other higher body do we have? The Attorney General says we're not the public and we're not allowed into her meetings. You know, so what higher body do we have if the district attorney's office isn't doing anything? The attorney general's office isn't doing anything. Do we have to go back to the feds? Do we go. have to go back to LAPD being under federal control yet again? The next speaker is Akili. Consent decree. <laughs> Better than that. I yielded it the last time, and that I did that out of a sense of frustration. Uh, but our presence here has made a difference. Yes, that's right. Us being here on Tuesday has made a yes. difference. Yes. Us being here and making these points has made a difference. So I wanted to come and, and, I, and end my sense of frustration. And I remember my uh, my friend Tom Hayden, who I've known for over 45 years, and remembered that his inside and outside position. I also want to say to our friends from the Police Commission, I am in fact a professional organizer and activist. You make reference to us as if we are somehow outsiders. You make reference to us like the Citizens Council made the King and others during that time. So I want to stand up and say to you, yes, for the past 45 years, I have been a professional activist and organizer. Okay. We are real, and our positions are real. That's right. I want to talk specifically about something that was raised here a number of times before, because our respect and trust is very, at a very low level. 1,300 complaints were registered, none with merit. 
We have brought this to you before. There are some simple things we think you should do. One, take the complaint system out of the police force and put it in CBOs and community-based organizations. Two, have civilians do it. And three, create an app. And it's an easy thing to do so that I and others can simply go on our phones or use our computers to file a complaint. And maybe, maybe the number of complaints will go up. I'm almost certain they will. And maybe some of them will be found with merit. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Paula Miner, just a sec. Um, Inspector General, can you talk about your app for a second? Oh, what? Oh, I love it. Okay, I'm sorry, you can't. Go out and look at it. Okay, next. Yeah, and you know what we would like to hear about the app. You know it's out there. It's already out here. But the thing I wanted to comment on is the... Um, Activities that happened at the last meeting, and I'm so sorry again that Matt Johnson is not here to um, hear them, but at the last meeting, there was disruption by some people, not by all. By at, the last meet <laughs> at the last meeting, the room was full. Everyone was asked to leave when the disruption occurred, and then when the commission decided to resume meeting, they cited um, the California Code 54957.9, which of course was, you know, we had to look it up and we also, you know, read it. And um, we know that it's open to interpretation. While it does say that a uh, public body can stop a meeting if it has been disrupted by a group or an individual, at the end of it, it says, and this is your discretion, nothing in this section shall prohibit that legislative body or community.